This was my absolute favorite episode of the entire season. It was amazing, action-packed, and everything that the 10-year-old me would have loved. Heck, who am I kidding? It made me feel like I was 10 again. And of course, it made one of my favorite characters seen in the epic light that he was shown in in Legends. Nobody will ever say Boba Fett was lame and died like a little, well, you know. Let's just jump right into it because we have a lot to cover here. As Mando blasts through the galaxy, he has a little fun saying Grogu's name over and over again. It's kind of like when you call your dog's name and they just keep looking at you, like, what? Din has Grogu summon the ball with the Force, and we can hear the resentment in his voice as he says he's promised to return the child to his kind. We can tell that Mando has formed a strong attachment to the child at this point, and vice versa. Din asks, don't you want to learn more of that Jedi stuff? And Grogu does this scoffing noise, as if he doesn't really care for that stuff anymore. Now this makes me think that he'll eventually choose both paths, like Tar Vizsla. He will become the next Mandalorian Jedi. They enter Tython, they find the Seeing Stone, and they land. Then jetpack to it. As Din places Grogu atop the Seeing Stone, we see Grogu interact with butterflies. Now in canon, Vader sees himself as a figure in the Force, with butterflies surrounding him. I always believed that these butterflies were symbolic of the light side that remained in his soul. Or, you know, the last bits of Anakin Skywalker that can be seen floating around. He then goes on to kill all those butterflies, you know, metaphorically, but of course there's still a little bit of Anakin left. Anyways, I digress. We've also seen Kylo collecting blue butterflies with Chewie. We see a ship fly overhead, immediately we know whose ship this is, and during the watch party I freaked out because we haven't seen this one in 40 years. This is the Slave One ship. Stay tuned for my video that's going to be covering his ship in full detail. There's a lot of cool stuff to know about it. Boba Fett has returned. Mando goes to grab Grogu, where the Seeing Stone ceremony has begun. Grogu has connected with it in the Force, and the planet is helping him to see into the Force itself, and for those connected, to hopefully see back. This could be Jedi, it could be Sith, Light, Dark, or those in between, like the Bendu. Mando gets pushed back by the Force field, and Grogu is unfazed. The Seeing Stone lighting up with ancient writing around it, symbolizing it's active. This gave me huge Jedi Fallen Order vibes. This writing is ancient script. It's not Arbesh. It was used by both light and dark side users before the age of the empire. It was super ancient and also known as the Old Tongue. We've also seen it in the Jedi Temple on Lothal, as well as the Sith Temple on Malachor and the Tomb of Darth Bane on Moraband. Not to mention the old games. As Din comes down the mountain to see who arrived in the Slave One, a lot of you during the watch party mentioned that someone can be seen atop the mountain with Grogu. I can't really figure it out, maybe it's just a shadow or something, but if you know what it is or have a theory on it, comment below. The boulder before Din gets blasted and we're met with the familiar voice of Boba Fett. Played by Tamora Morrison, the original actor who played Jango in Attack of the Clones, and did the revised voice work for Boba in the original trilogy. Jango was the most notorious bounty hunter in the galaxy. That is, until he died at the hands of Mace Windu due to a faulty jetpack. Which, ironically, was the same fate as Boba's, who was Jango's clone that he called his son. Boba and Din meet, and we learn that Boba just wants his armor back. But he's not alone. He's accompanied by none other than Fennec Shand, who survived thanks to Boba in the last season. Din asks if he's Jedi, and Boba says he's after the armor that he's just a simple man making his way through the galaxy. This is a callback to the famous line by Jango Fett to Obi-Wan Kenobi. I'm just a simple man trying to make my way in the universe. They have a short standoff, only to call a truce as Din removes his jetpack and the others lower their weapons. Din looks at Fennec and says he thought she's dead, as Boba says that they were both left for dead on the sands of Tatooine, but sometimes fate steps in to rescue the wretched. Fennec says that her fate was Boba who saved her, as she reveals some cybernetics keeping her alive. Now, Fennec Shan's armor and even hairstyle is super resemblant of Sam Wessel, who was enlisted by Jango to assist in the killing of Padme Amidala in Episode 2 Attack of the Clones. Now, Sam Wessel was hunted by Anakin Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi, to which she met her demise at the hands of Jango Fett at the last second, who shot her in the neck with a Kamino saber dart to avoid her from spilling information about him. Now, Boba says that he was tracking Mando. How is this possible? Well, I think because he was tracking his own armor within the Razor Crest. Boba asks for his armor back, telling Din that the armor was given to his father, Jango, by his forebears. 
and in exchange, he offers the safety of the child as well as his own. Din is super resistant, he says it goes against the Mandalorian way, but before he can properly respond again, a ship flies overhead, landing to deploy stormtroopers. Boba and Fennec go to fight as Din goes to get Grogu, only to be pushed back by the force field as Grogu is in serious meditation, reaching out in the force. What he's seeing, we don't know. It could be good, it could be bad, it could be light, it could be dark. Maybe there's someone through the force that is reaching out to him and speaking to him. Or many beings. Maybe they're dead, maybe they're alive. Maybe it's the force ghost of Yoda. As Fennec takes out the troopers with her rifle, Boba goes full primal with his Tusken Raider gaffy stick. This was a weapon that the Tuscan used to attack and kill. It's essentially a stick with a spike on one end and a club on the other. Boba goes absolutely nuts. Insane. Breaking, stabbing, maiming stormtroopers. Shards of plastoid flying all around all over the place. And plastoid is what stormtrooper armor is made out of. It was absolutely glorious to see Boba so primal and just epic. We get an Indiana Jones nod when Fennec pushes the loosened, massive boulder down at the troopers. Now if you didn't know, Indy was created by George Lucas, so it's a cool nod. As Boba brutally kills the last of the troopers in his way, he spots his armor in the Razor Crest. As Din joins Fennec to fight the troopers, they eventually become a bit outnumbered, when all of a sudden, Boba lands in, full slow-mo as the stormtrooper turns around to get taken out. This is Boba in his armor for the first time in 40 years, which had me crying happy tears, which is a really weird feeling, I gotta say. Now for me, this was like all you Marvel fans when Steve Rogers got Mjolnir in Endgame. Actually, maybe even more, because it's been like 40 years people have been waiting for this. And for me, since the 90s. Now Boba's using absolutely everything. He just takes them out like nothing, using even his knee missiles to send them running to the ships, and then using his rocket launcher to blow them up, crashing one ship into the other in a fiery end. Now from above, Moff Gideon's Imperial Arquitan's class light cruiser shoots a cannon blast directly to the Razor Crest, blowing it up. Boba flies to his ship and we cut to see Moff Gideon inside at the bridge. He smirks and asks if the Dark Troopers have been deployed yet. Now four dark side versions of Iron Man fly out to the child. I'm feeling Jon Favreau definitely added some awesome Iron Man vibes to these. Now these guys I think are phase two. There's three phases of dark troopers. Now they're resistant to lightsaber attacks, but the first is that they were much lighter, but they had exposed wiring. The second being larger with better weaponry and armor, and the third being like the Hulkbuster. That one is also an exoskeleton suit that I think they're saving for Moff Gideon to get into for the ultimate battle in episode eight, possibly. Now I think this whole season is becoming like the Suicide Squad, as many of you mentioned in the watch party. I believe many of the characters we saw this season will eventually show up and fight for the child with Din against the Empire. As they land and take the child, Din and Finnick arrive just too late. Boba tracks them in the Slave One, only to realize that the Empire is back. To his belief, he disengages and meets the two down below. It's amazing to hear the Slave One again. That iconic sound from the prequels and originals is music to my ears. This was an episode I know that the 10 year old me would have just gone as crazy for. As Mando searches the wreckage of his ship, he sees the ball that Grogu always played with, collecting it as he finds and grabs the best scar spear given to him by Ahsoka from Elsbeth in the last episode. Walking up to Boba, Boba shows Mando the lineage of his armor, saying his chain code has been encoded in this armor for the last 25 years. His hologram shows an insanely long line of past owners, whom I'd love to know who they all were. Explaining that his father was a foundling who fought in the Mandalorian Civil Wars, Din understands. Now I'm briefly gonna give you a rundown on Django as a kid and his history with the Mando Civil Wars. There's a really awesome Legends comic book, which I guess now is canon, which is pretty cool, called Open Season, which is all about Django as a kid and his rise to, well, becoming the most notorious bounty hunter in the galaxy. Django was a foundling on Concord Dawn, which was a surrounding world in the Mandalore sector. Long story short, Django was the son of a farmer. Then along came a man named Jaster Mareel, who was leader of the true Mandalorians. Now Jaster was on the run from a traitor named Tor Vizsla, who was from Death Watch. Django's dad hid Jaster Mareel in his farm and told Django that he was feeding some homeless men. When Tor Vizsla came looking near Django's dad's farm, he found Django's dad and beat him up in front of Django, until Django's mom created a distraction and shot one of the Death Watch in the face. Django's father orders him to run, and he does. 
leaving his parents behind who were immediately murdered. Fett runs into Jaster Muriel, who eventually took the boy under his wing and recruited him in the Mandalorian Civil War against Death Watch as one of the true Mandalorians. Jaster dies eventually and Jango avenges him, becoming the leader of the true Mandalorians himself. Now the people who found Din were Death Watch, so the two clans have always been waging wars against one another and have varying beliefs. Explaining this to Din, Din accepts that the armor belongs to Boba, so this armor is just repainted from his dad's from Jango's. The deal is done, says Din, where Boba assures him that it is not, as he promised the safety of the child in return for his armor. Now Boba joins the crew until the child is safe. Flying in the Save One, they arrive on Navarro 7, where Cara Dune is now a New Republic Marshal. Din asks her to locate Mayfield, who you might remember from Season 1. Mando is going to spring him out of jail to locate Moff Gideon's cruiser. We jump to Moff Gideon's light cruiser, he walks to the cell containing the child, and as he enters, we see Grogu absolutely toying with the stormtroopers with the Force smacking them here and there, even going as far as using Force Choke, to which many of you think is a dark side move, but I should mention, while the move may be more akin to darker or angrier motives, Luke Skywalker used it as well in Return of the Jedi, and he was far from the dark side. As Grogu knocks them out, he gets all sleepy and tired, and Gideon steps up to him, igniting the Darksaber, asking Grogu if he remembers one of these from times of old meaning if he remembers using a lightsaber or having seen many lightsabers during his time as a Jedi at the Jedi Temple before Order 66. Grogu is tired, I think because he had to cut himself off from the Force for so long to protect himself that he isn't used to using it as much as he was when he was a Jedi at the Temple, learning from many masters. Using the Force can also tire one out, like it does to Luke in The Empire Strikes Back when failing to lift the X-Wing out of Yoda's swamp. They blast Grogu with a stun blast and cuff him. Gideon tells his officer to contact Dr. Pershing, who is the cloning doctor responsible for the experiments on the child, to tell him that they have their donor. The plan now is for Gideon to kill Grogu to harvest all of his blood, which has force powers, or in Star Wars lingo, a high M count, midichlorian count. End of the episode. It was amazing, simply amazing. Thank you, John Favreau. Thank you, Dave Filoni. Thank you, Mr. Rodriguez, for directing, and of course, everyone else involved. This was my favorite episode of the entire show so far, which is saying a lot. Boba is back and better than ever, as Terry Silver would say from Cobra Kai, or I should say Karate Kid. Now, here's what I think will happen in the next episode, my predictions, and I'm going to make more videos on this. I think the next episode will revolve around rescuing Mayfield from jail, and then tracking the light cruiser or going to Dr. Pershing who will have the child momentarily. Unless Pershing comes to Gideon and his ship. I think the season finale will end in a big bang all out battle like Endgame. With everyone we've seen from this season fighting together against Moff Gideon and his dark troopers as he himself gets in a phase 3 dark trooper mega suit, maybe, to destroy Din. Hopefully Ahsoka returns with Bo-Katan, the Night Owls, and we get to see another Jedi join the mix, Luke or Ezra, is my hope. I hope you enjoyed this episode of The Mandalorian. It was absolutely phenomenal. As a huge Boba Fett fan, I couldn't be happier. They did him such justice. And all Boba Fett fans, all Mando fans around the world, I know they're doing the Ewok dance from Return of the Jedi. So this is a great day for all of us. Have an awesome rest of your day. I will catch you in the next video and the next watch party next week for episode seven and of course the breakdown. Until then, my fellow Jedi and Sith friends, remember, the Force will be with you, always.